Third story of the day is about China banning all forms of fentanyl. This is such an enormous win for not only Donald Trump, but the United States of America, uh, you know, any race, religion, gender, political party, because fentanyl is really, really damaging. So I want to give you guys a few stats real quick. 5% of the world is America, and we consume 80% of the world's opioids. We have a ridiculously huge drug problem and it's not just fentanyl to blame it's the pharmacy industry it's um you know of course the border has some stuff to do with it to be, but to be honest a lot of it is legal opioids it's not all illegal i think the pharmacy industry is a huge problem five percent of the world's population 80 percent of the world's opioids and fentanyl recently surpassed heroin as the drug most cited in overdoses so you know, this is killing more people than heroin, more people than any drug now, and fentanyl is the silent killer because it takes a very little bit to kill you. And uh, it was a lot of it was coming in from China because I don't believe in the war on drugs. Like, you can't outlaw marijuana and arrest people and think it's going to work really well. Um, but when it comes to fentanyl, that was never a problem five or ten years ago. It's a very new problem. So a lot of it is coming from China. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, Trump did that. doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Fentanyl and... Our problem keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and I just want to say to a lot of activists, too, because a lot of activists, they like say Colin Kaepernick. I'm not trying to pick on him because I, I think he said some cool things. And I'm not telling him to stand. I don't care what you do, but stand if you want. If you want to disrespect people, that's fine or whatever. You want to get your point. My problem with Kaepernick is he got all this attention on him. He has all this attention. And the only message he has is police brutality and then he does some huge contract with Nike who has like, you know, suspect labor, child slave labor and, and other, I'm not saying they definitely do, but like the laws of where they work are, wouldn't fly in the United States. So that's what, like he'll never talk about fentanyl. He'll never talk about black on black crime, which takes so many, not only celebrities, but it also takes 500 people in Chicago. It, it's the biggest killer of black people besides maybe I don't know if opioids and, and heart disease. I mean, if you if you really care about black people or white people or Hispanic, like if that's your whole bread and butter is like, I'm going to pander, this is my people, like I, do what you have to do, but it doesn't actually make sense. So that's what annoys me about all these activists. They claim like they wanna save lives at the border in America in certain groups or whatever they wanna say. And then they don't, will never talk about this. They'll never talk about crime within our own communities. They'll never talk about the mindset. They'll never talk about our culture, which is telling people to take pills and to kill people. The, the, the same celebrities who say they want gun control. My friend showed me a, a video of Leonardo DiCaprio, some new movie where he's got a gun in his hand and he's like, F, like, it's like these are the same celebrities who are saying gun violence is bad and then they go on the big screen and promote how cool gun violence is to millions of people and how cool owning a gun is and killing people. It's like celebrities are such ridiculous hypocrites. It's pathetic. It's so embarrassing. And um, with fentanyl, if you care about America, if you care about lives of whoever you claim to care about, look at the biggest killer when it comes to drugs, surpassing heroin. I mean, this is a drug that's sneaking up on people. Trump bans it. And uh, it's probably going to save a lot of lives. But uh you know, I guess it's not cool to understand that Trump is actually like the greatest president I've ever seen. I mean, he does more in two days than I've ever seen anyone do. He gets more accomplished in a month than the last three presidents combined. The dude is on fire. Super ambitious. Look up some old Trump interviews. I was watching a Trump interview from the 80s on BBC. He get, He's always been ambitious. He's always been better than a lot of people. And uh, everybody's always been like, Trump, how do you do all this, man? Everyone wants to be you. And Trump has always been humble. He's like, ah, you know, I'm just doing me. Like, I'm having fun, trying to enjoy my life. The only reason he brags so much now, in my perspective, is the news lies about him, so he writes his own history. It's like when I say, I have 250 million views, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm not patting myself on the back, like, I'm a better person than everyone. I'm saying it because the, the media writes about me and lies about me. So, and they call me self-proclaimed hip hop artist and news analyst. So I'm sorry, I'm, that's not my legacy. When, when something happens or when I'm older, I don't wanna look back at the news and say, oh, look, Anomaly was a fake analyst and artist who was an, uh, uh, this and that. Like, no, I wasn't. I'll write my own history because you guys are lying about me and that's not what everyone's gonna read and think I was. So at least now they have video footage of me explaining who I am. Same with Trump, he's, re he's never been a cocky person. He's always been very, very humble. He only started doing that when they tried to ruin and destroy his life. So he's like, listen, that's not who I am. I'm doing all this stuff. 
Next story of the day is about something else Trump is doing, uh, prison reform. 